Welcome, friends. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. You are tuned into Propaganda Watch, that weekly series where we examine different pieces of propaganda floating through the mainstream media and other sources and dissect them for their propaganda value. And this week, unfortunately, we have a very, very serious piece of propaganda to examine. Serious because it impinges on the very raison d'etre of the Corbett Report. And I'm talking about something that obviously relates to that particular subject that is the word that at least people who are not exposed to this information on a regular basis will use when they encounter this information for the first time, the C word, specifically conspiracy. Um, Yes, of course, conspiracy theory is a, a pejorative term or has become a pejorative term in the popular imagination over the past half century. And there's a very specific history to that, a history that I've outlined and talked about and examined in detail in a number of different videos and podcasts and interviews that I've conducted over the years, including perhaps most thoroughly in episode 50 of the Corporate Report podcast, The C Word, where he talks specifically about the origins of the term conspiracy theory and how it has been weaponized by the CIA since its introduction into the popular lexicon in the 1960s. And then... Uh, Shut Up Burglary Theorist, for example, was a video that people might remember from a year or two ago where I talked about uh, recontextualizing that conspiracy theory slur in a different way to get people to see it in a different way. That was an interesting one that if you missed it, I hope you'll go back and check it out. I've talked, for example, about how the founding fathers of the United States, who are at least given lip service to being revered by the political normies, were Conspiracy theorists, they had a theory about how the king and crown of England was conspiring against them and conspiring to keep the American colonies down, and they revolted against that conspiracy. Uh, I talked about that specifically in Corporate Report Radio episode 183 on Meet the Conspiracy Theorists. Or uh, just uh, four years ago, James Evan Pilato and myself were talking about this on New World Next Week, where we noted a new study that shows the conspiracy theory insult is losing power, uh, because like so many other words that are overused and overapplied, it tends to lose its gravity uh, when it's when it's used willy-nilly. But, unfortunately, that is not the end of the story. No, the conspiracy theory term has been weaponized and has been deployed as a tool largely to marginalize voices that have alternative ideas or want to explore alternative uh, uh, potential theories about the way the world operates or the way various events have played out. And again, as a descriptive term, there's nothing really wrong with it. Yes, we theorize about conspiracies, but of course that's not the way that it's used. It's not used in a descriptive sense, it's used in a pejorative sense. Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, you're a crazy kook. As I say, for the past half century that has been used and deployed on on the public consciousness as a way of marginalizing those alternative voices. But unfortunately, now it is being used as a target that is being put on the backs of anyone who would dare question any sort of official government story on events. And I say this advisedly because we now know from a new document obtained from, of all places, Yahoo News. So let's take a look at this. Uh, Yahoo News first wrote about this last week, August 2nd, 2019. Exclusive FBI document warns conspiracy theories are a new domestic terrorism threat. And the article goes on to say, the FBI for the first time has identified fringe conspiracy theories as a domestic terrorist threat, according to a previously unpublicized document obtained by Yahoo News. The FBI intelligence bulletin from the Bureau's Phoenix field office dated May 30th, 2019, describes conspiracy theory-driven domestic extremists as a growing threat and notes that it is the first such report to do so. It lists a number of arrests, including some that haven't been publicized, related to violent incidents motivated by fringe beliefs. The document specifically mentions QAnon, a shadowy network that believes in a deep state conspiracy against President Trump, and Pizzagate, the theory that a pedophile ring, including Clinton Associates, was being run out of the basement of a Washington, D.C. pizza restaurant, which didn't actually have a basement. The FBI assesses these conspiracy theories very likely will emerge, spread, and evolve in the modern information marketplace, occasionally driving both groups and individual extremists to carry out criminal or violent acts, the document states. 
So this is the document that's been uncovered, and Yahoo News helpfully does provide the document itself. I'll link specifically to Scribd.com, and can someone out there in the audience please post this up to archive.org, because Scribd is a terrible service. It is uh, difficult. You have to sign up in order to download things, and things get scrubbed from Scribd all the time. Archive.org, they tend to stay up. So if it isn't up on archive.org, please do so, and please provide a link in the comment section, not at GoopTube, at CorporateReport.com, so other people can find it. I do it myself, but I actually want to motivate other people to think about such things and use a service like archive.org, because it is important. Um, But having said that, let's take a look at the document itself. As Yahoo News notes, this is from the FBI. It's an intelligence bulletin from the FBI Phoenix Field Office, dated 30th of May 2019, with an interesting redaction directly underneath that. I'm assuming that relates to the author of the document, but uh, let's ask Yahoo News about that, I guess. Uh, It's uh, headlined, or it's titled, Anti-Government, Identity-Based, and Fringe Political Conspiracy Theories Very Likely Motivate Some Domestic Extremists to Commit Criminal, Sometimes Violent Activity. So there you go. That's the overall statement, and it starts with uh, uh, markings about the the way that it's been classified and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it says, domestic extremists employ a number of indicators, some of which may be criminal and others which may constitute the exercises of rights guaranteed by the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. The FBI is prohibited from engaging in investigative activity for the sole purpose of monitoring the exercise of constitutional rights. Well, thank you for putting that up front and center. I'm assuming this is boilerplate that they add to a lot of these intelligence bulletins because all the FBI is doing here is pointing out that, oh, well, look, there's these conspiracy theorists. They might have extreme ideas that will cause them to do violent acts. But we're the FBI. We're not allowed to investigate people just because they have certain ideas or just because they're using their First Amendment rights to commit certain speech acts, right? Right. So there you go. Now they can go ahead and detail and profile people based on their First Amendment rights because they've gotten it out of the way. Well, we're not going to open any investigations on anyone based on First Amendment rights, which is hogwash for a number of reasons. One, the documented history that we know of about, say, uh, FBI and COINTELPRO. And if you don't know about that history, I'd suggest uh, uh, there's a Corporate Report radio in the archives where I examine some documents that you must have in your info arsenal, uh, which does include some COINTELPRO documents that are worth reading so you know what that uh, what that was actually about and the way that the FBI infiltrated groups that were exercising their First Amendment rights back in the 50s and 60s and tried to disrupt them in numerous sneaky and underhanded ways and was successful in doing so. Um, so, again, we know that the FBI does this sort of thing on the reg, on the reg, as the kids say. Also, I think it's important to note that just as there's parallel construction, which is an investigative technique where the NSA or some other shadowy agency gets information that it's not legally supposed to have through some kind of wiretap that's not FISA approved or whatever it is, information that basically they don't want people to know that they have behind in the back door behind the scenes. So they'll feed that off to a FBI or DEA or whatever agency they want to conduct an investigation. And that agency will use that information to find other information in the public record that then allows them to come to the conclusion that they already came to with the secret information. That's called parallel construction. Look it up if you haven't uh, heard of it before. And I think that's the exact type of thing that this type of report can do. This is a conspiracy theorist, so they may have other extreme views, but it would be it would be technically against the law for us to open an investigation into someone just because they have conspiracy theory views or exercising their First Amendment. So let's look for some other reason to open an investigation on them. That's the way that they can get around that very easily, assuming they care about such things at all. Again, as I say, this is probably just boilerplate they put at the top of the document. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. U-F-O-U-O. The FBI assesses anti-government, identity-based, and fringe political conspiracy theories very likely motivate some domestic extremists wholly or in part to commit criminal and sometimes violent activity. The FBI further assesses, in some cases, these conspiracy theories very likely encourage the targeting of specific people, places, and organizations thereby increasing the likelihood of violence against these targets. These assessments are made with high confidence based on information from other law enforcement agencies, open source information, court documents, human sources with varying degrees of access and corroboration, and FBI investigations. All right, so let's examine this paragraph and see what it is they're actually saying. And in order to do so, 
As I pointed out, for example, recently in episode 357 on language as a weapon, we have to come to an understanding of the definitions of the various terms that are being employed if we want to have any sort of understanding of what is being said here. So in this case, we'll scroll down in the document, down to the Appendix B, where they have the various... Uh, the definitions of what they're talking about. Prominent anti-government identity-based and fringe political conspiracy theories. The conspiracy theories referenced in this intelligence bulletin have been categorized as anti-government, identity-based, or fringe political because they assert secretive, malevolent acts either by an allegedly hostile and tyrannical federal government, by racial, religious, or social minority groups, or by political opponents. So they give some examples of anti-government conspiracy theories here. For example, NWO a group of international elites control governments, industry, and media organizations, instigates major wars, carries out secret staged events, and manipulates economies with the goal of establishing global rule. UN. The UN is being used by an evil global cabal to erode American sovereignty, strip away individual liberties, and bring foreign troops to American soil in order to replace democracy with global tyranny. False flags. The official story surrounding a given terrorist attack or mass shooting is a lie. The event was staged or conducted by the government to justify encroachment on civil liber liberties. Hmm, let's, let's think. NWO, UN, false flags. Wow, this sounds like an episode of The Corbett Report, doesn't it? And yes, yes it does, because these are all subjects that I've ta ta touched on and talked about in various ways over the years. For example, New World Order? Okay, how about episode 101 of The Corbett Report podcast, New World Order 101, where I went over the term, the, the origins of that term, what it means denotatively and connotatively, what it represents and how it can be uh, combated or deconstructed in various ways. Uh, I talked about it again, very specifically in questions for Corbett number 19, which was titled, What is the New World Order? Uh, I did a, an interview on the Mind Renewed podcast with Julian Charles a number of years ago that I still think is an important podcast for understanding the way that I conceptualize the, the overall hierarchy or structure of what's happening and, and the way that it's structured at the top, as it were, and why that ultimately the head of the beast isn't as important as the heart. I did that in a, uh, in a conversation which I entitled Anatomy of the New World Order. I'll throw a link in that. To, uh, to in the show notes so you can familiarize or re-familiarize yourself with that material. Uh, I've talked about this in various contexts over the years. For example, Globalization 2.0, China ushering in a new, ushering in a newer, shiner, shinier new world order. Um, and I've even talked about the ways that this term can be overused or misused. For example, the new world order does not control everything, which was Corbett Report Radio number 109. But if the FBI's contention is that everyone who talks about such things is some sort of raving, barking, frothing conspiracy theorist who wants to go out and kill people and that it's all about motivating people towards hate, well, that narrative is somewhat undermined by my not-so-distant past uh, video, Only Love Can Defeat the New World Order, which I will note was recorded as the voting was happening, the selection was happening in the United States while the statists were casting their vote for Team Red or Team Blue, Team Coke or Team Pepsi. I was making a video called Only Love Can Defeat the New World Order, so kind of undermines the FBI's overall narrative there, but getting back to the document itself, those are anti-government conspiracy theories. Again, you can search the Corbett Report archives for examples of uh, United Nations uh, ba uh, articles and videos uh, and in interviews and podcasts that I've done, or false flags, obviously a subject that I talk about quite a bit. Then they get into identity-based uh, conspiracy theories like the Zionist Occupied Government or Islamberg, um, which I uh, disagree with in various forms, but uh, it, again, the, there's no real differentiation here, as you note from this FBI document. I mean, if you believe in a conspiracy theory, then you're lumped in with everything else that's ever mentioned, including fringe political, what they term fringe political, which is Pizzagate, which, if it was framed as pedogate and was looking at political pedophilia, is a subject that I've talked about in the past and examined in great detail, and QAnon, which I've uh, talked about numerous times in my disbelief in that particular theory. But again, all of these, any of these beliefs are apparently enough to get you labeled as a conspiracy theorist by the FBI and put on a watch list of some sort. Oh no, we don't do that. We don't open investigations on people because of First Amendment activity. It says so right in this boilerplate text at the top of the document. You can trust us. 
Uh, so moving on in the document, uh, they do talk about some examples of various people who were motivated by their conspiracy beliefs. But let's let's re-examine the ultimate thesis here. Uh, again, coming from the top of the uh, the document proper, which really starts on page two, uh, it says the FBI assesses anti-government identity-based and fringe political conspiracy theories very, very likely motivate some domestic extremists wholly or in part to engage in criminal or violent activity. Here's the interesting part. I don't necessarily disagree with that statement as simply an observation. I have no doubt that there are some people who take on board some conspiracy theory and are compelled to believe that violence or acting out in a criminal way is the way to solve this problem or whatever it is. But the real question is, does this warrant then some sort of special precaution? Does this warrant some sort of intelligence bulletin? Because let's contextualize a statement like that. Yes, some people are motivated by whatever fringe political conspiracy theory or whatever it is to commit acts of violence. That's probably true, that just as a statement of, of fact. But then again, some people are motivated by absolutely anything because they are insane, criminally insane. And who knows? The the, the sun is following me in the sky, therefore I must kill anyone who worships the sun. Whatever it is, there are crazy people with crazy beliefs. And even if we take the surface level, the, the, the official government explanation of various things, like uh, Mark David Chapman, he shot John Lennon because Satan was there, God was telling him to kill this evil Satan, Satanist or whatever. I mean, let's not talk about the CIA-connected doorman or anything of anything to do with that. No, it was Mark David Chapman, and he, he was just crazy. Okay, so he was just crazy. So does that mean we should ban the Beatles music, I guess, because one person went crazy listening to it? No, two people, because remember Charles Manson and believing the four horsemen of the apocalypse were the Beatles speaking to him, and it was the White Album that set him off on the race riot thing, which again was largely constructed in the trial by Vincent Bugliosi, who also wrote the case closed about how Oswald was a lone nut. But again, don't look at any of that. Just take it at face value. Okay, Manson was motivated by the Beatles to go out and kill Sharon Tate and other people, or have people kill her. Uh, so therefore, we should ban the Beatles, or anyone who's a Beatles fan is a potential suspect, because it is absolutely true that, at least again, according to the official stories here, we're just going, we're, we wouldn't dare question an official story, so let's just take the official uh, story of it. Well, Manson was motivated by the Beatles to go out and kill people. So, therefore... And he, it, it was absolutely true. They, they could say the FBI assesses that uh, the Beatles very likely motivate some domestic extremists wholly or in part to engage in criminal or violent activity. Intelligence bullet in everybody, right? That's the way this works. So, I, again, I don't necessarily disagree with that statement. It's the implications of that statement that I find troubling because we all know where this is heading and what this ultimately means. But for another important and interesting example of what the FBI is looking at here, let's go down to page four under perspective, where they note specifically that based on the increased volume and reach of conspiratorial content due to modern communication methods, it is logical to assume that more extremist-minded individuals will be exposed to potentially harmful conspiracy theories Except, one, except ones that are favorable to their views and possibly carry out criminal or violent actions as a result. The internet has also enabled a crowdsourcing effect, wherein conspiracy theory followers themselves shape a given theory by presenting information that supplements, expands, or localizes its narrative. That's right. Open source crowdsourcing of information so that you can find information that supplements, expands, or localizes a narrative. Wow, you know, if I didn't know better, I'd say that was James Corbett talking, because that's exactly what I was saying at my TEDx groaning in speech, talking about the net is mightier than the sword, and talking about the open source intelligence news. What is the open source part of the Corbett report? It is exactly that, crowdsourcing information from different people with different perspectives who might have different windows onto any given story. It's the incredible uh, potential to actually share information with people around the world. But the FBI is pointing out, uh-oh, 
The domestic terrorist extremists might use such methods. It's like the domestic terrorist extremists like breathing air. Maybe we should outlaw air. Domestic terrorist extremists use money to buy things. Maybe we should outlaw money. I, again, it's nonsensical if you actually look at the implication, the broader implication of what they're saying here. But uh, again, if they can t- taint the very idea of sharing information on the internet by association with domestic terrorist extremism. Again, do you understand where this is going? Now, for those who don't understand, I think there's an extremely important part uh, that is made clear uh, early on in the document where they're talking about um, things that might potentially uh, de- uh, uh, disprove their thesis here or things that might change the assessment. Um, And essentially, what they are saying is that things that might disprove the assessment boil down to two things. Indicators that may lead to revised judgments or cause a change in the confidence levels associated with this assessment include a lack of conspiracy theory-driven criminal or violent activity in the near to long term, or significant efforts by major social media companies and websites to remove regulate or counter potentially harmful conspiratorial content. Wait, did you catch that? Did you did you hear what they're saying? There are two things that might alter our assessment here. Number one, uh, a lack of conspiracy theory driven criminal or violent activity in the near to long term. So as long as there are no conspiracy theorists that do anything, then I guess, you know, then it's not a problem. Or significant efforts by major social media companies and websites to remove, regulate, or counter potentially harmful conspiratorial content. So the FBI is looking to YouTube, Twitter, Insta, whatever, Facebook, any any of these social media outlets to make sure that they crack down on conspiratorial content that could be potentially harmful because people might read it and get radicalized and go out and commit violent acts. Maybe. Again, I mean, again, put this in the perspective. We should ask iTunes and Spotify and all these places to take the Beatles off the catalog because some people might go crazy and start killing people as a result of them. No one would stand for that. But conspiratorial content, well, maybe. You know, it's First Amendment and, yeah, it's protected. Again, they note in this document that constitutionally protected First Amendment speech cannot be investigated by the FBI, but it should be taken off social media and websites should go out and start scrubbing this content because it may be potentially harmful. That is chilling that an FBI document would state that. And then the other part of that equation is, well, if nobody, if no conspiracy theory driven people go out and commit any acts, then, well, then I guess uh, it's not a problem. So, I don't know. Let me put my conspiracy theory cap on for a moment, my tinfoil hat. Well, hmm, imagine a false flag in which which is pinned or blamed on a conspiracy theorist. Wouldn't that be the perfect solution to this in order to crack down on all of this content? So just imagine if you happen to be a person in a position of one of these law enforcement agencies or somewhere in the government that wanted an excuse to crack down on conspiracy theorists and conspiracy theorizing, would you not then make sure that an incident occurs that can be framed or blamed in some way on the conspiracy theory community? And in fact, we have seen this multiple times over the years, as has been pointed out along the way, where, for example, oh, this this shooter went to this website and post it on this website. Therefore, he's a conspiracy theorist, A, and B, we should take down this website. Uh, this is the way things are going, and we've seen examples of that in the last 24 hours as I'm recording this, talking about the shooters in the U.S. being motivated and inspired and communicating on places like 8chan. Oh, well, we better take down that website, because again, domestic conspiracy theorist extremists with their fringe political extremist identitarian politics will be motivated and radicalized by such sites and the sharing of information. But the real kicker here, the real coup de grace of this unbelievable document comes later on where they say, another factor driving the intensity of conspiracy theorizing in the United States and the subsequent threat from conspiracy-minded extremists 
is the uncovering of real conspiracies or cover-ups involving illegal, harmful, or unconstitutional activities by government officials or leading political figures. End quote. Listen to what they are saying here. That a factor driving the intensity of this conspiracy theorizing that they are attempting to, well, it's not technically criminal, but criminalize it, the thought crime of believing something that isn't officially approved by the government. Oh, well, one factor motivating that is the actual uncovering of illegal and harmful activities by people in government or leading political figures. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly right. Because conspiracy theorists are not always, certainly not always, but enough of the time to be interesting, right. And I've talked about that many times. For example, most recently in my top five conspiracy theories that turned out to be true. But there are many, many, many more examples of that. And yes, that is why people not only do not, but should not immediately and blindly accept whatever government official explanation comes along in the wake of any matter of great importance. But the FBI in this document are attempting to criminalize the idea of thinking and looking for actual crimes. The, think about, again, think about what they're saying. The top law enforcement body in the United States is trying to criminalize the people who are actually, as they admit, uncovering some real illegal and harmful activities. Now, why would they want to do that? It's almost as if the criminals run the FBI, but oh, that's a crazy conspiracy theory. Uh-oh, I better watch out for the thought police. They're coming. I, I just, but only because this is so incredibly serious that I don't know how to put this in a way that makes it more apparent to you. They are now coming out and trying to criminalize the idea, uh, holding ideas that are not officially approved. And this is the first step towards that. They are putting out intelligence bulletins. Be on the lookout for crazy conspiracy theorists who talk about false flags and the New World Order and whatever else. Uh, don't fall for it for a second, number one, of course. But number two, recognize where this is heading. And one of the key effects of something like this and why a document like this might be leaked to Yahoo News and reported widely in the mainstream media is the panopticon effect. Watch out, guys. The FBI is watching what you're saying and doing and what you're posting online, so you better not post anything that might go against the narrative because they'll be on to you. The FBI is watching. That's one of the effects of a document like that, and that's why it is so chilling. It is utterly chilling that this type of thing is being put in black and white, that we will go after people who are uncovering actual, real, illegal, and harmful activities committed by government officials. That's, that's crazy. That is crazy. Um, but it's there in black and white. Please go and read the actual document for yourself. I think there's some interesting uh, things to be said about it, and I've said my bit. I'm interested to hear your bit. Please leave your comments and suggestions, analysis, uh, in the comments at CorbettReport.com. And as I say, please somebody go and archive.org this document. Put it on archive.org so we don't have to rely on Scribd, where undoubtedly this document will vanish at some point. That's going to do it for today. I am James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. Looking forward to talking to you again in the near future. The Corbett Report is brought to you by The Corbett Report subscriber. A weekly newsletter featuring James Corbett's international forecaster editorial, recommended reading and viewing, discounts on Corbett Report DVDs, and once a month, a subscriber-only video. Sign up today to start receiving your copy at corbettreport.com support.